Hello there. Welcome to a review for One Piece manga chapter 1090. The chapter has released a little bit early as often happens with these chapters that release after long breaks. So let's hop right into it. It looks like we'll still be on Egghead and seeing some of the results or maybe flashback to what caused the current situation on Egghead with the Straw Hats. So getting into it, we have our cover chapter, our cover page. The cover request, Captain Crow reading a book peacefully with black cats. It's been a long time seeing, since seeing Captain Crow last. So that's interesting. Okay, looks like we're diving right into it. Yes, uh, does this have all the pages, I'm wondering, or should I just read what is there? Uh, let's see, I think it has all the pages, let's just go right into it. it. Starts out with Luffy, I guess he's grabbed the receiver and started talking. Hello, I'm Monkey D. Luffy, I'm the man who will become the Pirate King. What are you doing, Luffy? We are in an alliance with Dr. Vegapunk. If you care about your safety, then withdraw your fleet from around the shore. Ah, save me, York says. Is the Gorosei responding? Your straw hat Luffy, correct? Who is alive with you in the lab phase right now? Hmm. If you count the injured ones, then our number is... Don't say anything, Luffy. Gotcha. Beep, beep. A woman voice. Is that Nico Robbins? Says Shepard. So Shepard recognized Nico Robbins' voice. Or he recognized the woman's voice and suspects that it's Nico Robbins. Uh, uh, Kizaru overheard that. Those bastards. How low can they sink? Are they really as evil as the rumors say? Big news. Morgans is overhearing them too. At the World Economic Journal headquarters. What's this I'm hearing? What's happening over there? And then we have BB responding. What? Luffy san? Here's Robin. Talking with them will only give them information. And they must not easily learn about us. And Luffy. My bad, you're right. But will that make them withdraw their fleet? Then Usopp. Like hell that will happen. Don't underestimate the Marines. Now we flashed over to St. J. Garcia. We have to protect three things. First, the physical safety of York. Secondly, the punk records which constitute Vegapunk's brain. And finally, the power plant needed to produce the Mother Flame. Everything else can be lost except for those. So the Goros, they have their targets. So they are interested in protecting York and punk records because those will be under their world government control and the plant needed to produce the mother flame so that they can make another one using York who has Vegapunk's knowledge. Okay. And here's Doberman responding, but Sir Rob Lucci and his squad are still there alongside the other Cyberpole agents. Ship, uh, Garcia responds, I'm just considering the worst possible scenario. It's important that we 
prioritize the most important factors to us. So have been understood, sir. Humans are no different from insects. Even if their numbers reduce, they will just multiply again. Yes, sir. So that's interesting. Seems that the people that were suspecting that maybe St. Jay Garcia is not as bad, or not a bad guy, probably wrong since he has the same outlook. He just revealed he has the same outlook as all other celestial, well, not all, but the majority of celestial dragons, that humans are basically scum. So St. J. Garcia is definitely not going to be an ally in the future. Okay, we're back to Egghead and York is crying. You heard all of that, right? I made a deal with the five elders. If you hurt me, if you hurt me in any way, they will eradicate this island from existence, just like what they did to O'Hara. And then Nami hits her. Wow, that hurts. You'll pay for that. The five elders will hear about this. Go ahead and complain more. We don't care. And then, who was that? Sanji responding, hey, calm down, Nami. She's unarmed. Are your wounds feeling better now, Robin? So Robin got injured. And she's bandaged up. And Chopper is asking about her wounds. Yes, thanks to you. If you don't think that will make me happy, you bastard. Ah, even though I was facing two of the Seraphim, I'm still ashamed of myself. I know how you feel. Forget about it. Get some, forget about it and get some rest. So, Kaku's pretty injured too. Rob Lucci looks okay. Let's see who else. These scans are really small, so the text is tiny and the panels are tiny, so it's hard to make out a lot of details. But that's another thing that often happens with these early releases. We'll probably get the high quality scans during the week. So, yeah, Kaku is injured. Rabalucci is sitting next to him. Because he's laid out on bed. Robin's bandaged up, but she is sitting up. Nobody else seems to be injured. Wow, Shaka, Pythagoras, Edison. Edison is still alive, Lilith. Stop brawling, Lilith, and trying to connect comms down below, says Usopp. For the state of Big Punk's abilities. Whoops. So, for the sake of Big Punk's satellites, before our. There we go. able to blow it up. For the sake of Vegapunk satellites, for the sake of Vegapunk satellites, four are heavily injured and two are dead. As for the Straw Hat crew, what are you whispering over there, Luffy? Or Luchi? It's nothing, just talking to myself. So Kaku has noticed that Luchi is whispering. And Luchi says he's just talking to himself. Hmm, that's suspicious. So is Luchi actually talking to himself? Or is he in communication with someone? Someone that Kaku doesn't know about? Hmm. That's probably going to come up. Okay, Usopp. Here's Usopp speaking into the communicator. 
Hey, to everyone down below, is everything alright over there? Underground laboratory basement. Straw Hat Crew, thank you for the food, we owe you our lives. This is the CP Cypherpool agents that were captured. Looks like they've given them food. Don't call, don't call them out, they're still our enemies. Now we're safe thanks to you. Get us out of here. No, we can't do that. Then at least move us somewhere else. Because having these creatures close to us is giving us the creeps. Aren't the Seraphim your allies? Well, yes. But what if they got out of control again? Can you assure their safety, Vegapunk? Of course, because those bubbles are made from the same bubble shield used by the Pacifista Mark III. So all of the Seraphim have been captured in the bubble shield bubbles. We have the Jinbei Seraphim, the Mihawk, the Boa Hancock, and the Kuma. All of them are a little bit scuffed up, but they don't look like they've taken much, too much damage at all, which makes sense because they are Lunarians, so they should be tougher. They all seem relatively calm for being captured. The Kuma and Jimbei Seraphim are just sitting there cross legged, basically. The Mihawk and Hancock are a little bit more angered at being captured. Those bubbles are even bomb blast resistant. It's made with the same properties of sea prism stone. Okay, so the bubbles have the properties of sea prism stone, which means they negate devil fruit powers. That's interesting. Which make them effective weapons against devil fruit users, just as I was thinking. <laughs> That's amazing, we thought these were just soap bubbles. And the Mihawk clone, how dare they lock us in here. The Boa clone, ah. You don't have to worry about us, since we didn't receive any orders to eliminate you. You're of no concern to us. So... This is me thinking here. We finally have confirmation that the, or further confirmation that the Seraphim have independent thoughts, it seems. Because we have Mihawk there, how dare they lock us in here? He seems to be upset at being captured. The Jinbei one is just sitting there silent, and the Kuma is sitting there silent. And then the Hancock one is the one that says, you don't have to worry about us since we didn't receive any orders to eliminate you, you're of no concern to us. So they aren't like mindless drones, they are independent beings so far, at least to some extent. Ah, okay then, that's a relief. And Hancock was speaking to the Cypherpool agents inside the prison where they're all captured. And then Frankie, even so, we're still grateful to you, S Snake. Thank you for undoing the petrification on us. And then Vegapunk, that's strange. I don't remember programming her to act like that. Hancock. And this is a flashback. The Hancock Seraphim is remembering. This is Luffy. Hancock, these are my comrades. You have to undo your powers on them. Please, you're the only one that can save them. Okay, I will undo it, so please stop staring directly at me. So that's interesting. The Hancock Seraphim has inherited Boa's crush on Luffy. Huh. So this is another bit of information about the Seraphim. They apparently inherit 
the personality of the original to some extent, which it lines up with how the Jinbei and Kuma clones were behaving. Ah, so this is interesting. They inherited the personality traits of the originals. So does that mean they didn't really have to defeat the Seraphim? Maybe they Maybe the Seraphim, maybe they activated the activated the traits of the original originals that Seraphim were cloned for from. And in the instance of Seraphim like Kuma and Jinbei, we were generally good guys. And Boa and even Mihawk to some extent are not like hmm. Yeah, they're not like enemy enemies to the Straw Hats. So this answers some questions about Seraphim. They kind of can act independently, A. B, they have the traits, personality traits of their, of the originals that they were cloned from. Thirdly, they seem to be they don't seem to be eager to kill unless they've been ordered to do so because the Hancock clone was reassuring the Cyberpol agents that they have no orders to kill them, so those agents are safe. Okay, so back to reading. Jinbei laughing. Wah ha 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 ha. She's the perfect copy of Hancock. She even looks down on everybody else except Luffy. It's funny to know that the Seraphim based on her has the same emotions towards Luffy. And then Vegapunk. Very interesting, so these emotions are considered to be one of the pieces of information transferred through the lineage factor during the cloning process. And he's taking notes in a notebook. So yeah, this confirms, in story confirms that Emotions are considered to be one of the pieces of information transferred through the lineage factor during the cloning process. So that means clones will have the personalities of the originals, basically. Okay, let's see. Next page. Thank you. Now we're back in the... Well, we've been back in the present, but we're in the present. Luffy, thank you again, Hancock. Kia, did you just say that you love me? Stella, although the comm system is working again, I still can't open the Frontier Dome. You can't escape here. You can't disable the barrier. Then York speaking. It's useless, I've locked everything with a password. And here's another bad news for you. I didn't share that info with your brains, and I don't plan on telling it either. Then, this is Lilith, you're starting to get on my nerves. Ha 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 ha, that password and the world government are two armors that protect me. Ah, I'm starting to get angry, girl. Ah, oh, I'm starting to get hungry, girl. Why you? We're surrounded from every side, Stella. This is a Stussy speaking. The fleet compromises 100 ships and nearly 30,000 marines on board. And Sanji, 
Yes, we have a dire situation on our hands. Here you go, Stussy. Do you want a cup of coffee? Or coffee? You said your name was Nami. You're the navigator of the crew, correct? This is Vegapunk. Yes, Nami responds. The log pose is not pointing to a new destination yet, but... I think it can still follow the other directions it recorded in Wano. One of them is pointing northeast from here. Vegapunk? Ah yes, that's where Elbath is. And both Luffy and Usopp are making extremely shocked faces. Elbath! We're finally going there? I've been dreaming of going there since the Island of Giants. So Usopp. And we have Usopp and Luffy singing and dancing. Elbath, Elbath, it's surely, surely to be big, and the people there too. And we have Stussy speaking to Luchi. Would you quit staring at me? Luchi doesn't respond. And Vegapunk, luckily for us, your ship is already on. The Labosphere Stratton. But since the island is surrounded completely by a marine blockade, it's impossible for us to escape from the coast. We have to go northeast to the other side of the island. Fortunately, the Vega Force 1 is already stationed next to your ship. I hope it will carry us all through the marine blockade, but it can only fly within the airfield of Egghead. It will fall down as soon as it leaves the airfield's range of the island. And Frankie, no problem at all. The Sunny can take over just before it completely leaves the airfield range. No one will be able to chase us after we fly one kilometer away. My word! That ship can fly a straight full kilometer? Very well, let's go with that plan. And Frankie, it's powered by cola. Like a punk cola? And the, uh, Lamb Stella, I forget her name. It's a very well thought out plan, but we need to disable the Frontier Dome first before we can escape. Then, York, you'll never get the password from me. And Vegapunk, in that case, we'll just have to hack it. Do not underestimate the great Vegapunk. Okay, it's all three of them. Vegapunk. Is that Edison, the little robot guy? And then the sheep girl. Lilith, I leave the command of the Vega Force 1 to you. Let's move the ship over to the other side of the lab this phase. We need to hurry. The barrier might open at any time. You're right, though. Disabling it will allow us to escape, but that would mean we'd be vulnerable to enemy fire. Exactly. So we have Lilith running with Frankie, Luffy, and Bonnie. You know, to tell you the truth, I've never left this island before. Frankie, hey, we're not going for a picnic, you know. Luffy, I'll definitely miss the food here. Bonnie, same here. We won't get to eat any more of it tomorrow, so let's bring some more pizzas. We have cheese on the ship, so don't worry. Sanji can make some for us. I see, what a great man, skilled at cooking. And at the same time, strong in battles. And then Luffy, hey, why did you get enough good mood all of a sudden? Weird. I'll admit I feel better now that I gave up on killing Vega Punk. Good. You won't be annoyed by your crying anymore like last night. I wasn't crying. 
Okay, so pausing here. Bonnie has given up on trying to kill Vegapunk, and she seems to be happier now. That must be related to the memories that she saw. Or maybe she finally spoke with Vegapunk and Vegapunk explained that maybe there's a way to bring Kuma back. And that's why she's in a better mood. And she's given up on trying to kill Vegapunk. Okay, let's go to the next page. We've got the Navy ships. Robolucci has made contact. Yep, that confirms the whispering. Robolucci was contacting the world government ships. Now we know what's happening inside. Relay this info to everyone at once. You heard that, Porcelano? Straw Hat was talking arrogantly to deceive us into believing that he had control over the whole situation. But it doesn't change the fact that they're still cornered like rats. This is Kizari speaking. Now here is Garcia. The Frontier Dome is a defense system that utilizes lasers, am I right? Can't you go through it since you're a light human? Kazara, that might be possible, but the one Vegapunk stationed to guard the dome is a friend of mine. And Garcia, well, you'll just need to ignore him. Kizaru, I can't ignore a man who's determined to fight us for his duty. Doing that would go against my ideals. And Garcia doesn't respond. Furthermore, if we start our assault now, Centomaru will surely order the Mega Sea Beast weapons and the 50 pacifistas under his command to sink our fleet. The casualties would be enormous. Then Garcia looks exasperated and puts his hand to his head. Hmm, the situation is getting more and more complicated. What about the power plant? Do we know its location? Yes, back to Kizaru. Rob Lucci is quite the shrewd and cunning fellow. He already sent all the info we need. And we've got the naval ships, battle stations. Tell the Rokushiki users to be on standby. Our assault will begin soon. Yes, sir. That's the big guy, Navy Vice Admiral, the elderly woman. Free all CP0 agents from those pirates. Yes, ma'am. Then that long neck guy with the mini chins. Total. Tonal bombardment units. Remember that bomb blast attacks don't work on the pacifistas. Aim for the Mega Sea Beast weapons. Yes, sir. We're back to Luffy and crew. Yeah, ha, ha. I love these Sky Island grounds. He's bouncing. Da, ha, ha. I get what you mean, but don't forget our goal here. So, Frankie, we arrived at the Sunny. Uh oh, here comes Kizaru. Yata no Kodakami. Laser beam fires. Let's go at it then. He's bouncing along the buildings inside of Egghead Island, so he's penetrated through the defenses with his laser powers. Centaur Maru has seen Uncle. All pacifist the units. Obliterate our enemies. So Centaur Mario is given the command and the pacifist has heard it and they're responding. Here's Kizaru. Prepare yourself, Centaur Mario. My defense, says Centaur Mario, is the toughest in the world. And he catches a light speed kick from Kizaru. His hands are coated up with hockey, armament hockey. Hmm. 
Hmm. And Luffy, what's that? There's light coming from below. And Luffy, hey, someone very strong is coming. And Luffy looks very concerned. Okay, some very strong is coming, and that's the end of the chapter. Finally, back on track for a little bit with no breaks. So that means a new chapter next week, the week after this coming week, because this is the chapter for this coming week. Okay. So we have. More information on the Seraphim. This personality transfer brings up even more questions. That if they clone, if they end up cloning any members of the D clan that were part of the Warlord system, because by now they've had two members of the D clan that were members. They've had Law and Teach. So if they cloned either one or both of those, would those clones have the will of D? They would inherit the personality. And the will of D does seem to be connected to their personalities. So that's a huge question mark. Their log pose, Straw Hat's log pose, or is pointing towards Elbaf, so they'll be heading to Elbaf when they escape Egghead Island, which pretty much everyone expected that Elbaf would be the next destination. We haven't heard about Shanks, but my expectation here is that Shanks will have left Elbaf by the time the Straw Hats arrive. We'll be seeing the aftermath. I feel like maybe Kid will be wrecked somewhere near Elbaf. I don't think the people of Elbaf will be supporting Kid since he tried to attack the island and attack them. Hmm. So they'll be heading to Elbaf. We got Kizaru penetrating into the dome, so he's going to be causing some issues. Probably Luffy's the only person on the island that would be able to repel Kizaru. I'm thinking... Hmm... Yeah. Luffy could probably repel Kizaru. And any other member of the Monster Quartet would be strong enough to hold them back. Hold back Kizaru. Not to full on repel him. But they're all split up. And then... And have they taken their... Well, yeah, they sort of have taken their eyes off Luchi. And actually, Luffy has left. Wait a minute. Luffy has left. Because it's Luffy... Luffy, Frankie, and Bonnie that are going to retrieve the Sunny. That means, yeah, they have left Luchi and Kaku with everyone else. Robin is injured.
Luchi seems pretty uninjured. Kaku is injured, but I have a feeling that if they were going to fight, Kaku would be able to get up and fight just fine, so... My question is, what is stopping... Like, once Kizaru starts making a ruckus and attacking, what stops Luchi and Kaku from getting up and turning on the straw hats? Their goal is to kill Vegapunk, so... And yeah, Vegapunk's right there in the lab with them. Mm. Zoro is there, Zoro and Sanji are there, but I don't think that Zoro and Sanji and Jimbe is there too. Hmm. Brook is okay. I don't think all of them together could stand up to Luchi and Kaku if they decided they were just going to continue their mission and kill Vegapunk. And the ways they break up on program the Seraphim, they have to stay, they have to remain captured. They can't be let loose because they're not going to obey Vegapunk. They're only going to obey the order from St. J. Garcia since he's nearby and can give orders. So they can't rely on a Seraphim to help them stop Rabaluchi and Kaku if Rabaluchi and Kaku decide to go back to their mission. So it's, it's an interesting situation. It doesn't seem like it's going to be as clean as... And then we have these two specific suspicious scenes of Luigi. The first one is him whispering to himself, which was confirmed later in the chapter. He's communicating with the Navy outside of the dome. He's transferred all that information that has allowed them to formulate a plan and send Kizaru into the dome. Kizaru is going to be following orders, so his main goal is going to be killing the biggest threats, possibly killing Vegapunk. Taking back York. Protecting the power plant. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly how they stop and or escape from Kizaru. Kizaru does seem to have some minor regrets, but he's not going to hold back. He's going full force against Sintomaru, and Sintomaru is doing okay right now. He's deflected or deflecting one attack, one light speed kick. So yeah, this is a good sort of setup chapter. It's interesting that they didn't flash back to show us how the Straw Hats were able to defeat the Seraphim and basically take control of Egghead Island. That's going to be a lingering question. There's also the question of what Bonnie learned about Kuma and Vegapunk. There's that question. Maybe some of those things will be addressed as this 
how it continues. But yeah, that's going to be it for this review. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next chapter.